KJ, we spent three weeks asking the coach his name to starter. Has he ever come up to you and said, KJ, you're my starter for the opening week? No, he, he, he hasn't done that yet. I mean, I, uh, I've very much respected the way he's gone about it. I mean, um, his MO is competition, 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 just in terms of how he runs practice, um, in terms of how everything functions within the team. Um, he hasn't said that yet, but I mean, I've taken the majority of the one reps um, for the majority of camp, but you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in competition as well. And uh, yeah, that's, that's my take on that. We'll go to Ben. KJ, obviously quarterbacks are naturally a leadership role for you, I guess. How have you kind of taken to that at least, you know, stepping into a new school, new role and new place. And I guess what's kind of been your process in terms of doing that? Yeah. I mean, a big message that I really liked um, like coach Leach said from day one and, it was a style that I saw playing on the other sideline from a while in terms of, you know, you can tell that a bunch of his teammates at Washington, a bunch of his players at Washington state were, were definitely a, the most excited to play and, and be interested in elevating everybody around them. Um, I think from day one, uh, the effort and attitude um, of this team is something that's inspired me and I've respected as well. Um, I've definitely seen coming to the sec, you know, the slogan, they always say it means more. Um, I've seen it just in the day-to-day -day practice. I mean, seven-on-seven seven dudes, you know, damn near going live, um, which is awesome to see. Guys are battling for, for roles on the team, fighting for starting spots. Um, you know, so I've, I've really highlighted the idea of, you know, me wanting to be a catalyst, elevating the guys around me, making sure that I know my job through and through. Um, you know, I haven't been in this system for four years. Um, so I'm, I'm putting a big emphasis on making sure I do my job before demanding um, everything out of everybody else. But I think as a whole, everyone's starting to kind of come into their own and kind of understand their roles and, and know where they're supposed to be on the field um, in this offense, in the scheme. Joel? You mentioned uh, getting to know what, what you're doing and, and things and learning the offense. I know you're focused in on that, but as part of that, I'm sure part of that's building relationships with receivers and timing and that, that sort of deal. What receivers, I guess, to this point have kind of stood out to you, um, whether it's in scrimmage action or practice or whatever, who's kind of stood out to you in that regard? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we – since day one, you know, we, I was here June 1st, um, and, you know, we were kind of – us quarterbacks and, and me leading the charge, we were kind of implementing the offense ourselves. So going all the way back to kind of June, July, um, you know, Javante Payton was somebody that stuck, stuck out to me in terms of someone that could separate in the slot – Austin um, reminds me of wide receiver Trenner when I had at Stanford, just Mr. Reliable. You know where he's going to be. He knows what he's going to do. He feels space really well. Um, and then Osiris being the, uh, you know, leading receiver last year, I think uh, he's starting to understand um, that he's going to get a lot more targets this year, um, number one. Um, number two, he's got to be a threat in one-on-one -on -one situations. He's got to be someone that we thoroughly trust. Um, and he also feels zones really well. Um, and, you know, if you, I don't know if you guys have been out there able to watch any of the scrimmage, but Wally's been an impressive freshman, Jaden Wally. Um, he's another guy who naturally feels space really well. Um, and Malik Heath's got the ability to take the top off. You know, he was uh, down for a week or two in camp, which we're just now catching up on those reps and we're going to continue to move forward. But, I mean, there really is, you know, six, eight guys that can go. Um, I've, uh, Brad Cummins is a big target. He comes to mind as his first day back in a couple weeks. Um, Spivey. I mean, all these guys have potential. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just whether or not they can be consistent and, and be real urgent um, about, you know, taking ownership and taking the one reps. We'll go to Paul. KJ, hey, kind of from a comfort level, kind of compare – to where you are now with this offense to say the first week of training camp when you were, I know you got introduced to the offense and walkthroughs, but kind of compare where you were then to where you were going into this week as far as comfortability with this offense. Uh, compared to when I, when I first started going over this offense to now. Yeah. Um, well, I think before we ever really stepped foot on field, I felt like I knew, all of the concepts on paper. 
Um, so from walkthroughs, I don't know, I'm in camp right now, but that started, I don't know, maybe a month and a half, two months ago. Um, it's been putting what I know on paper into real life. Um, and, you know, the plays, what a lot of people don't understand about this offense, and I've seen so much tape from Washington State, is one play can play out, you know, three to six different ways. Um, so making sure that uh, my eyes are in the right place and, I, and I'm kind of sensing what's going to happen before it's happened, before it happens, that's kind of where I'm, my focus is now. I, I know the concepts. I know where the guys are supposed to be. They know where they're supposed to be. Um, but depending on the coverage, um, you know, we got to anticipate a little bit better. We got to, we got to play with a little bit more understanding of what exactly we're trying to attack. So I think, I mean, from when I first got here, okay, this is the play. That's one, two, three. Now it's like, all right, one, a one B two. Like I'm trying to progress through my reads, uh, much faster than I was two months ago. Tyler. Yeah, <clears throat> KJ, obviously quarterback's a position where you're always trying to improve and you're always trying to retool and add things to your game. I'm wondering, being in this offense, what are some things that you've kind of had to reflect upon and be like, okay, maybe I need to change this from the way I did things at Stanford or, or maybe I could add this to, you know, my, my quarterback repertoire and it'd make me a better quarterback in the air raid system? Yeah. No, I mean, one of the big reasons – um, why it was super enticing to come play in Leach's system. I didn't know exactly um, how different it was, but, you know, at Stanford, we were much more attacking what would technically work on paper coverage-wise versus cover two, cover four, cover six, you know, all, all those different um, ways defense can play out. Leach is just trying to attack space. I mean, um, he he doesn't necessarily worry too much about that, and it, after being here three months, I kind of feel like his whole idea is to train intuition through repetition. I mean, just over and over and over and over again, um, understand, you know, how certain things play out regardless of coverage. Um, it's more of a feel thing. Um, and I'd say a big theme in this offense, take what the defense gives you right now, um, not progress through your reads and hit the runner. If they're giving it to like, take it now. Um, that's, that's one of the big differences that I realized. And, um, you know, I've also realized that the same play can be successful against any look. Um, now that we've had, I don't know, roughly 20 practices, counting walkthroughs, um, the same exact plays have worked through through every look. So just building that confidence, um, knowing when to move on through certain progressions faster than others. Um, you know, I definitely want to focus on, um, you know, being detailed and making very, very quick and decisive decisions. Brian. KJ, is there a difference in the way you prepare or maybe a different mentality from going from a system where you're going to throw the ball 25, 30 times a game to a system where you're going to throw the ball 45, 50 times a game? Um, well, we're, yeah, we're just moving into mock game week now. So I'm starting to sense in terms of from the coach's perspective how they compare or how they prepare. Um, but most staffs, I would guess, prepare pretty similarly across college football. But um, – off the top of my head, I will be preparing a little bit differently um, in terms of going through, you know, maybe certain looks when I want to get to certain plays and, and things like that. It's, you know, Leach really does give the keys to the quarterback in the system, which has been um, something I've been really impressed with and inspired and also know that that comes with a lot of responsibility. Um, so I will be um, approaching my preparation a little bit differently in terms of maybe, you know, a little bit more of, uh, ideas of what I may like to get to in certain situations um, and, and certain coverages that I want to attack. We'll go back to Ben. KJ, I know you played against Mike a number of times at Washington State when you were at Stanford, but I guess how, how much familiarity did you have with Mike and his staff coming here? And I know he recruited some of your high school teammates and you and stuff, but I guess what was kind of the connection that got you here and how, how did you kind of make that decision? Yeah. Um, well, we, I probably, we had about four or five high school teammates, um, go to Washington. I did at four or five high school teammates, go to Washington state. Um, you know, being in the PAC 12 in the North, I mean, we're always competing for the title. It was us, Washington, Washington state and Oregon as of recent, but, um, you know, I mean, I knew their system pretty well. I mean, I watched a lot of Luke Falk, um, when I was younger, um, you know, 
obviously I you know played against Gardner the one year that he was there um and then last year got to watch him a bunch I mean um I actually would watch go log into our defensive huddles to watch what they were doing like you know sophomore and junior year at Stanford to just kind of understand because I could tell on the field it was totally different than what we were doing um you know hence they were never using a tight end or a fullback just a totally different philosophy so I mean I was kind of familiar from a distance um I knew there was something obviously vastly different than what we were doing um but you know I didn't know him on any personal level or anything it was just kind of um what I saw from afar go back to Paul am now for several weeks kind of what's your impressions of the the offensive line and what kind of sticks out to you about those guys yeah well just going back and watching the tape from last year and and the year before I mean there's no doubt um the philosophy is is going to change slightly obviously for the defensive lines that we're playing but for them as well um but I've been really impressed with with uh their stamina in terms of pass prone probably in practice two three times as much as they were in the past um I think you know Cole and James both they're battling at center a little bit but Cole's been taking the majority of the one reps I think Cole's doing a really good job picking up coach Miller's philosophy protection wise um you know across the board I think it was pretty solid I think the only time to really feel live bullets was in the scrimmages um the past two Saturdays um and I think both I think all of us quarterbacks were helping them out a little bit in practice. We necessarily don't take it um, as it's live, so we might hold on to the ball a little bit longer. But they've been pretty impressive across the board, um, high effort, high intensity guys. And I got a lot of respect for Coach Miller. Um, and, you know, we got to help them out when guys are bringing pressure, throwing hots and whatnot. So a big part of their success also relies on us getting to the right checks and getting the ball out on time when defense want to heat us up. Joel. We were talking to Will just before you came in, and he was talking about you guys golf together, and it seems like y'all have a pretty good relationship already. Just kind of what's your, I guess from your end, what's your relationship like with Will Rogers and, and from just a veteran's perspective, what's he been like on the field and, and just your evaluation of him so far? Yeah, no, I've been really impressed. I mean, he's a really good man. Um, he, he reminds me a lot of myself, not, not to pat myself on the back, but me coming in as a freshman, you know, just – just really eager to play, um, you know, really eager to get reps, um, not gun shy. You know, he's, he's willing to, to um, fail, which a lot of times freshmen are kind of timid at times. Um, you know, he, he's a really good dude. We spent a lot of time together. Um, I think there's um, valuable lessons that both of us can learn just by hanging out. And uh, what, I, I think we really molded our relationship when we kind of looked at each other when we were here in June, July, and like, hey, I mean, we got a month and a half let's team up and teach this offense to the guys. You know, we're not, we're not really trying to compete. I mean, we're competing, but at the same time, like it was on our shoulders to, he had, he had ran a little bit of the system in high school. Um, you know, I had to absorb a totally new system. Um, and we were kind of leaning on each other's shoulders to um, communicate effectively to everybody else, what they were doing. And, you know, not a lot of people will probably mention that, but I think that's going to, um, pay dividends this year in terms of how we were effectively able to know the whole offense. I mean, if you came out to the first to th three practices, most of the guys knew everything they were doing. Um, and they had never been really coached up because they didn't have spring ball. So um, I give Will a lot of credit for that and myself and, and all the other quarterbacks um, for being able to communicate that to the rest of the team um, and the player run practices for, you know, the month of June and July. Tyler. I was going to ask a pretty similar question, but just kind of going off of that with Will, uh, this training camp seems like it's been a little bit longer than usual for y'all. Did you expect him to, to be getting this kind of praise this, you know, late into the training camp? Obviously, you coming in as the graduate transfer and him being a true freshman. I, I know on the outside, it seems like not a lot of people expected him to be talked about this much, but just knowing him and getting to know him over the summer, like you said, uh, it, it just kind of expand upon what he's done in practices to get all this praise that, that people have been giving him. Yeah, I think um, it's interesting you say it because at this time I'm really thinking about it. I mean, we come into a completely new system, completely new staff. 
Um, and the bottom line is, is he knew more about the system than, you know, maybe some of the other guys that have been here in the past or played. At least it showed, like, he was able to articulate exactly what the system was. And I talked to him a lot about – I mean, he had ran the system um, for, I believe, in high school, at least to a certain extent. And, um, you know, going to the same school as Gardner, he, he was familiar with certain terms and things. So um, – that was definitely something that helped them a lot and helped me understand the offense. Um, and I really do think, I mean, if you know what you're doing in this system um, and you make quick decisions, you're going to be pretty successful pretty fast. Um, I think, I think Schrader uh, is, a, is a hell of an athlete. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, Moose is, is a good quarterback as well. I think there's just um, time is on their favor in terms of, if they're able to kind of absorb the terms and know where everybody is. I mean, playing the quarterback position is incredibly difficult that is, as it is. But if you're guessing whatsoever um, at, you know, who's going to be where, um, that'll show up pretty quickly. And, and um, you know, I think we were both able to, to help each other um, to know by the time training camp came, we were going to compete, but we were both going to know where to go with the ball um, at any given time. We've got time for a couple more. We'll go to Brian. I don't know how much uh, game prep you guys have done looking ahead to next Saturday, but LSU, obviously, year in, year out, one of the best secondaries in the country, Derek Stingley, maybe the best cornerback in the country. With a guy like Stingley, how do you work against him and how do you work around him in this offense that wants to throw the ball so much? Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, we're, we're going to line up. We're going to run our stuff. We're going to go through our progressions. If it's there, it's there. If it's not, move on. I mean, we're not shying away from anything. Um, that's just a, that's the philosophy and B that's really all we, uh, that's just the way this system's run. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, I've watched him play a lot across the country. I know he's a hell of an athlete, hell of a cornerback. Um, you know, we're going to attack him in many different ways and, and hopefully with looks they hadn't really seen before, um, and, and make sure they're on their P's and Q's and, um, they're able to, you know, react quickly. I think, the first week, the bottom line is it's going to be who can execute and be consistent and, and be urgent from snap to snap across the board. Watched a lot of the NFL this past weekend, and that's really what it was. Um, so I think in, in a little bit, it, it's kind of a to our favor in terms of them seeing an offense they hadn't necessarily seen yet. Um, but at the same time, we got to execute at a high level regardless of who we're playing. Ben. KJ, you mentioned kind of teaching this offense and learning it in player practices over the summer. What did that kind of look like for you guys? And I guess what did those practices kind of look like for you guys? Yeah, I mean, it, it was uh, – honestly, I was kind of pulling from the book of what I was doing at Stanford. I mean, we were doing – we were running a full pra- – you know, we were running a practice in terms of um, lining up, Pat and go, doing one-on-ones, doing seven-on-seven, seven, running full team on occasion. Um, going through the mechanic, verbalizing everything we needed to verbalize. Um, you know, a lot of our stuff is, you know, driven nonverbal as well. Just working the mechanic, you know, those are things that um, can only be mastered with reps. So that was the, uh, the focus was just repetitions. We as many reps as we could in an hour, hour and a half, um, two, three, two, three times a week. And these guys are willing to work. I was super impressed showing up on Saturday, showing up on Sundays. You know, we already had the whole team out Tuesday, Thursday. So that's kind of what that looked like. And then with Will, you mentioned kind of like teaching the offense a little bit. How much of that, I guess, what did that kind of look like from your guys? Yeah, so it was interesting. I mean, I kind of uh, matured in a, in a different way of teaching offense in terms of installations were very meticulous, yard, you know, yardage or everything was, um, you know, this covers that covers. Out in this offense, it was a lot more teaching on the field. You know, it was like, hey, this is how that needs to be versus that coverage, you know, and kind of it's a lot more feel, if that makes sense. It's um, a lot of the teaching was done on the field. I mean, we got in the classroom and drew up base concepts of, you know, this is that, this is that. Um, but a lot of the stuff is just picked up through practice, to be honest. Uh, it's not necessarily um, as much theorizing in the classroom that we would do uh, quite a bit where I came from. All right. Thank you, KJ. Thanks, guys.